this is random, but I wanted to share it because it was on my mind, which is the concept of having peace as a metric for discerning if God wants you to do something isn't necessarily the best form of confirmation or it shouldn't be the only form of confirmation. What I mean is people will be like, yeah, I'm thinking about dating this dude. I prayed about it and I have peace. I'm thinking about leaving this church. I prayed about it and I have peace. I'm thinking about going to this job. I talked to some people and I have peace. And you hear that language a lot. One, I don't necessarily know where we got it from, just because when you see Jesus moving how he moved or the disciples moving how they move or the apostles or even Jeremiah, you really don't see them saying, yeah, I'm going to do this because I have peace about it, right? <laughs> but I can understand the sense. And the reason why is it, it if it's if it's isolated from other things, the reason why it's not necessarily the wisest metric is because the Bible says that our heart is deceitful above all things, right? Like when I was out here smoking all the weed, being a whole lesbian, watching pornography, you know, uh, being disrespectful to people, uh, like when I stole at, uh, JC Penney's and got arrested for it, guess what? I had peace. <laughs> and so sometimes it's actually dangerous to use emotion as a barometer for if something is good or not when your heart and your mind ain't right, right? So that means that there has to be some type of standard for discerning discerning what we should do that isn't merely subjective, right? Meaning that it has to be outside of us. Like our emotions can deceive us. So I think a better way to go about discerning God's will. So in Ephesians 5, Paul says, discern or try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. So one is, if I make this decision, is it pleasing to God? How do I determine what's pleasing to God? By looking at the scriptures and like what is holy, what is right, what is pure, what is kind. There are some decisions that are actually both pleasing to the Lord, right? So like going to this school or that school, it isn't necessarily an unethical versus ethical decision. And so the question might be, what would put me, which decision would put me in the position to please him most? Right. Would would going to this city actually be more of a temptation than going to this city to go to school? Would picking this job actually tempt me to be more greedy than taking this job, which would teach me contentment? Right. Both jobs are good, but both jobs will actually have different spiritual dynamics. Right. So is it pleasing to the Lord? One. <laughs> Number two, is it going to help me honor my neighbor? The decision that I'm going to make, does it help me love my neighbor as better than myself? Like Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so sometimes we have peace about decisions because the decisions are actually self-centered, right? So we want to move in a particular direction because it feels safe. It feels secure. There might be some selfish ambition wrapped in it, right? And so take it, like apply the grid of like, is this a selfish decision or is this a selfless decision? You got, you got some people like, I'm going to cut them off and I got peace about it. Is that a selfish decision or is it a selfless decision? A selfless decision doesn't mean that you don't have a boundary, but it means that you communicate where you are and why the boundary is being placed. That's a decision that's considering your neighbor. So that's that. Number three is coming. <laughs> Number three, have you considered wise counsel? The Bible says in a multitude of counselors, there is safety, right? We have a community for a reason. There are people who have experiences that we haven't had, who have uh, biblical frameworks that are more developed, more mature, have a gift of discernment or wisdom that we could pull from, right? And so we don't want to get in the habit of making all of our decisions in isolation. I, I just, I don't think that's actually wisdom. If anything, it's arrogant. It's thinking like, oh, like I'm good. Like I don't need nobody help. And that isn't to say that if somebody offers you counsel, that you have to submit to their counsel, especially if the Lord is leading you in a particular direction. But at least you considered it. At least you had somebody bring in a different viewpoint that can help you, you know, discern what is pleasing to the Lord. So consider and have conversations with and pray with people who are wiser than you. 
I completely had no intention of uh, making a Instagram post that turned into a little mini workshop, but it was just on my mind because most of our life is governed by decisions, where we go to school, where we don't go to school, who we befriend, who we stop being friends with, who we marry, if we have kids, like it's like choices that we're constantly making. And I think if we consider our neighbor, if we discern what's pleasing to the Lord and we consider wise counsel that leads us into making decisions that are more wise um, than not, because I mean, yeah, it's hard out here. So hopefully that's helpful. Bye.